Good afternoon, and a beautiful afternoon it is. We've had a, a beautiful worship time today with the church family and miss those who are not with us. But just want to take time this afternoon to share something from my heart with you. A year ago today, we missed our first Sunday in worship, maybe first Sunday ever. And for me personally, it was almost something of unbelief that we weren't going to be able to worship together as a church family. I don't recall ever a time that happening or even that we would think it would happen. And so when that became a reality, uh, Paul and I had some conversations and uh, he said, you know, you need to talk to the people in the church. Uh, you just need to give them a message of encouragement and a message of hope. And so that Sunday afternoon we came and the only difference was the chair was sitting on the other side and frankly I don't really remember what I said other than God's in control of all of this and we need to put our faith and trust in him that he will work things out. Little did I realize at the time that a year later we would still be waiting for things to be worked out and we're not there yet but we're making progress and when the church was closed and when I say closed I mean closed to uh, anybody and everybody that wanted to come best I could tell from our bulletins we missed three months uh, when we were allowed only 10 people in worship and that would have been the worship team so from the middle of March to the middle of June, uh, there were no more than a total of 10 people here. Uh, there were uh, times as we went on when people who did not have access to internet asked if they could come and, and join. And so we just started using the ministerial figure. And when we stood out, started counting 10, uh, there may have been a couple more than that, but it was a challenging time. And I'm going to share with you some things that have taken place in the last year. Some you may know, some you may not. Uh, and they're not in any particular order. So please don't get the idea that what I share with you is going to be uh, a matter of priority or importance in the scheme of things. Uh, when we first uh, met on a limited basis, one of the realities that we faced was the sanctuary choir was not going to be able to be seated as they had been accustomed to being. And uh, when you have a total of 10 people in uh, worship, it limited the number of people uh, that could participate uh, as a worship team, and I still call them the worship team, the sanctuary choir, uh, because they, they certainly fill both roles. And uh, I'm here today to tell you how much I appreciated uh, their ministry through these last, uh, this last year. Uh, I want to express appreciation to our music director, Phyllis Dodson, for her work, because I've seen what she's had to do maybe in a way that's up close and personal more so than you would. And obviously, it's a challenge when you only have a limited number of people with whom to work. And that has been the reality for the last year, and it has worked. And uh, what I'm seeing today, in looking back, I should not be surprised, is simply the Lord led through the whole process. Uh, while we may have been limited in what we could do, 
he was not limited in what he could do. And he has used that time to teach us that ministry can be fulfilled in different ways and using different people. And as we have worked through this process through the last year, the numbers have increased. Uh, both of those who felt like they were comfortable coming back uh, to be a part of the worship team, the sanctuary choir. And uh, I'm still looking for the time when uh, that team will be complete. It's not there yet, uh, but we're praying that it will be. At some point uh, after June, and I don't know exactly when this took place, we started talking about having our children and youth back in worship time and uh, talking with Ms. Lynn Moffitt and Ms. Alice James, uh, the worship leaders for those respective groups. Uh, they were very confident that it could work, and not only that, but they were willing to take steps to make it work, and they have done that in uh, their respective areas uh, where the children and youth meet. Uh, they have taken steps to ensure that uh, everyone is safe. And uh, it's uh, interesting when I look at that, I think, well, if they could do it. Why can't the schools do it? And so we're thankful that they have uh, continued with that ministry in the last several months. And uh, parents obviously feel comfortable about their children being here. And we just appreciate the Lord opening that door, and we are looking for the time when uh, other doors will open. Let me uh, inform you also that in this last year, the youth group, and I'm not talking about the children's youth worship time, I'm talking about the youth group, have met on a consistent basis. They, they have been meeting, they have been studying. As a matter of fact, about three months ago, uh, the Southern Baptist Conservative of Virginia had a seminar that was live streamed here at the church. And through uh, the ministry of Paul and uh, Andy, they were able to show that on the big screen in the fellowship hall. And if I'm not mistaken, that program lasted about six hours. And again, that was just an indication that not that in spite of all that's happened, the Lord has opened other doors. And I believe what we're hearing is those doors are con going to continue uh, to open because ministry is going to be done in a different way, regardless of what happens with COVID. Uh, if it is completely eliminated. Uh, this has opened a new door for us. And so for those who have worked uh, faithfully to make sure that the ministries of this church continue as much as possible, and some of them are not, uh, we've not returned yet. We'll talk more about those in just a moment. When we first missed that first Sunday. We had our worship service at uh, Country Store in Culpeper. And uh, to say that we were meeting in a phone booth would probably have been an exaggeration. I tell you, it, the room was small, but we do so appreciate uh, the people at Country Store for allowing us to use that facility for two weeks. And we'll tell you more about uh, the other side of that in just a moment. But it was a place where they had internet. And so we met there. Uh, we had a limited number. Uh, we probably could not get more than six people in that room. Uh, we had uh, and uh, Jason, uh, Cindy, uh, to sing. Uh, I had a sermon and that was kind of it. And during those two weeks, we became aware that 
the church was located within two miles of a tower, and we could have internet here in the church. Some of the people here started making phone calls, and the wheel started turning, and in two weeks, we had internet here at the church. The uh, dish is on the top of the sanctuary, and so the Lord opened a door that probably would not have happened had it not been for COVID. We can't really say that it would or would not have. All we can tell you is because uh, we had no other option of getting the gospel out, there's no question the Lord opened that door. And it's a door that's not going to close either. Uh, we will continue to live stream of services on Facebook. And Andy goes home on Sunday afternoon, puts it on YouTube. And I don't keep up with the numbers uh, but I can tell you that well, Sunday morning and Wednesday night, we are live streaming our services. That's the upside. Now, anything that has an upside can have a downside. And uh, we've had our issues with the Internet. We're not always sure what it is. Uh, one thing we have been led to believe is there are more people who have signed on to it in this area now that uh, have found it not to be a luxury but a necessity. And so is it a matter of too many people uh, trying to use a limited number of space? We've heard that the military has priority if they're doing operations in this area. Uh, we do know that uh, the weather is a factor, but uh, whatever it is, I can tell you that we don't feel like uh, we're the only ones who are dealing with that issue. And I'll tell you why I know that. Uh, I watch news. I'm not sure why, but I do. And I guess really I'm watching more for the weather forecast than I am anything else. But I have noticed that on TV, many of those are working from their homes also. And uh, they're still doing it and may continue to do that. But what I've also noticed is that they too are having their problems uh, with the issues. And sometimes they lose a picture. Sometimes they lose the sound. Sometimes they lose it all. And they'll just close out and they will come back to you after a while. And so I'm thinking, you know, these people have the highest form of technology and uh, the people who are trained and all of that, and this is happening to them, so who's to say that it's not going to happen here? And so I just want to thank the people who have exercised patience in working with us. Uh, in truth, it's not always on the church uh, uh, equipment either. Sometimes it can be a person's home computer uh, that may not be allowing them to hear or to see but this past Wednesday night, uh, we had some issues, and uh, that has happened a number of times on Wednesday nights, and all I can tell you is we're still talking about what can we do uh, to make sure that when the Bible study is uh, presented to you in your home, that you are going to be assured of a good, clear picture and a very distinct sound. And so uh, I'm so thankful today that God raised up Andy Burris and Paul Estes because they are the people that you don't see. In fact, they are the ones you blame when something goes wrong. Uh, just kidding. I'm telling you, uh, these are people who the Lord has gifted and uh, they are working. And I'm convinced without a doubt that if Andy can't figure the problem, then it's something beyond the equipment here. And so I just tell you that the Internet is, uh, is obviously uh, the wave of the future. I mean, this is, uh, it's here, and it's here to stay. Uh, but it's not without problems. 
And we are so thankful for the people who have understood that and uh, work with that. Having said that, and I said there's not going to be in any particular order, there's another matter that when all of this started, we had to figure out how we were going to handle it. That was the matter of stewardship. Uh, as you know, there are companies that will uh, take your offering and send it to you minus a, a coverage fee. And so we looked at that possibility. Well, frankly, we didn't look very long uh, because it became very obvious to us that the people in this church were committed to stewardship and getting their tithes and offerings. And initially, people began to either mail them or bring them by the church office when the secretary was here. For the first month or so, the offerings did uh, take a dip somewhat. And that was primarily, I think, because people didn't really know how to go about handling that. But once we got the system in place, let me tell you, people were faithful. I, in the last months, people have been very faithful. Uh, I know from talking to our treasurer that Initially, the balance in our checkbook went down, but it has come back. And now that we are back meeting as a church family in the Lord's house, it obviously is much easier, and we're not seeing as much in the way of people mailing them or bringing them in. There are some who still do, and we're thankful for people who are concerned enough about being good stewards, because as you well know, uh, the church has expenses that go ahead. Uh, the expenses continue no matter what. And uh, so, for instance, we have eight heating and air conditioning units throughout this building. And while we weren't using the whole building, and we're still not, uh, we still have to maintain a certain temperature in those buildings uh, through the winter. And usually in the winter, we will get uh, two super electric bills. That's just the way it is. Uh, this year wasn't the wor worst winter we've had uh, in that respect, but nonetheless, uh, it's an increase over other times. And so we make sure that we are good stewards. We make sure what the temperature in the building uh, is when we're not here. Uh, we make sure the lights are out. And uh, when I'm here during the week, I walk through the building, check and things just to make sure as much as we can that uh, the building here is, is safe. Now, we are working to the place where more people are feeling more comfortable about being in worship on Sunday morning. And I'm realistic enough to know and tell you that there are people who said they're not coming back until this is completely over and done with. And as a pastor, I respect that. Uh, through the years, we have not hesitated to cancel a service for various reasons. If there's high wind, high water, uh, deep snow, whatever it may be, uh, we don't care if it's Wednesday night, Sunday morning, whatever it may be, we're not going to put people at risk. Uh, we believe in common sense. We believe in using good judgment. And so this is what we have asked people. Use your best judgment. Uh, you do what you feel comfortable with. And I think no less of you if you're missing uh, because you don't feel comfortable. But I do want you to know that I have seen in the last few Sundays, it looks like the church is turning that corner. And by turning that corner, I mean that more people are feeling comfortable about coming back. Some of that has to do because some of the people have received uh, both of their shots. Uh, some haven't received any. And we have, from the moment that we were given the privilege of coming back to the church and worship, we were told that we could have 50% of our seating capacity. Now, uh, the building permit for this sanctuary 
allows us to have 325 people total in attendance. Uh, there may be times when we have exceeded that for special occasion, but we have not exceeded it on Sunday morning as a rule, and certainly not on Wednesday night. And so you figure that 50% of 325, and when we began coming back, it took us a little bit to find our way. And I don't uh, deny the fact that in the early stages, we made some mistakes, but we, it was a learning process. It wasn't like we had past experience to draw from. And so we uh, designed every other pew for seating, and we asked people to wear a mask. Uh, at the very least, when you're coming in and going out, and if you would for the entire service. I'm not going to tell you that what we have done is perfect. Uh, if we were to go back and do it over, there are some things probably we would do differently. But I am telling you that we have made it as safe as we could possibly do in order for people to come here and worship on Sunday morning. And I have said this, that I feel personally responsible for everybody's well-being. That's why on Sunday morning, I don't hesitate to cancel a service if we need be. Obviously, the two Sundays in February, there wasn't any question we weren't going to get here. Uh, but there were others that were borderline. We had uh, some icy conditions, and there again, uh, the attendance was limited, but it was open to those who felt like they wanted to come. And so when we uh, have gone through this process, we've done what we believe is right. Would we do things different? Probably. Uh, but that's neither here nor there because we're not going back and do it over. We hope. We're simply moving forward. And I do believe that uh, we are getting to the place where more people are feeling comfortable being in the Lord's house. And I do believe that Easter Sunday is kind of uh, going to be a milestone for the church. I think we're going to find out then uh, who is uh, serious about coming back now and who's serious about not coming back until later. And whichever your choice may be, the church will do everything we can to make sure that uh, you are safe. Uh, you, each person has to decide uh, what's important to them. And... Uh, as a pastor, I've just felt it my responsibility to lead the church. Uh, early on, we had a team, uh, we call them reopening committee, but they met three, four times and talking about what can we do and how can we do it. Now, we're still not having our Sunday school classes. Uh, we're not having a nursery uh, available. We have not had any church meals of any kind in the last year. And I know that in a different time, we would have had senior lunches. Uh, what we really have missed is during this last year, we've had several funeral services here. And in a different time, we would have provided a meal for those families after the service. And frankly, it grieved us that we were not able to do that because that was a ministry of the church. That was something that has always been a part of our outreach to those and to help them in that healing process. And we've not been able to do that. And we don't know at this point uh, when that will change. But I can tell you that for the services that we've had in this church, and there probably have been six or eight uh, that have been here, that's not counted the ones that I've had off-site. But for the ones we've had here, I would guess that at best the attendance at those services was 50%. Because I know those people well enough to know that they were the heart and soul of the community. They grew up here and in a different time, uh, this church would have been packed if not overflowing with people to come. But I understand and I, again, I respect that people are not comfortable. And uh, so we have followed what the Lord has led us to 
do, and we're just uh, going to continue to do that. Something else that has changed, and this is uh, obviously the first time in my years of ministry that I have experienced this, and the minister assistant uh, Paul and I have talked about this. We've not had the liberty of visiting in people's homes since this began, and <laughs> that's tough. That really is, and there are people who have been in hospitals, and you're talking about family, weren't able to be there with them, and neither were we. And it's hard to watch uh, and to know that there's anybody in this church who is going through uh, surgery or whatever it may be, and we're not there uh, to pray with them. And so we've just understood that we ask for your understanding that we don't have any choice. Uh, as, as guilty as we feel, and I say guilty because we just feel like it's our place to be there. And the Lord knows, and I hope you know, that we're at a different time, uh, we would be there. And so you well know that even families are not allowed to be with their families. And so that's really been the downside of all of this, that families have been separated. And uh, it's just a part and package of what uh, has been going on in this last year. I can say this. I'm thankful that in spite of the things that we're missing, I do believe that we have now a new appreciation for uh, what was taken from us. And nobody ever thought we'd ever see the day when we wouldn't be allowed to come into church and worship on Sunday morning. And I guess, quite frankly, there's a healthy debate on whether uh, anybody could legally tell us uh, that we could not do that. <laughs> and I have to think if they told me again I couldn't do it I don't know you may be bailing me out of jail but I'm not sure I'd go along with it but nonetheless uh, it's just been a different time but I can tell you not because of but in spite of what has happened God has kept the church alive and that's something that we come to understand that uh, and it's been underscored in these last in this last year, the church isn't about us. We are privileged to be a part of it. It's God's church. Uh, he said, I will build my church. And we have come to understand that you really miss something when it's taken from you. And we never thought that we would have that time of worship. And there's no doubt in my mind uh, whatever else has happened, God has kept this church alive. Uh, and he has done it through ways that we never thought would be necessary nor possible. Uh, we just never. And so God has proven himself. He's proven a lot about himself. He's proven a lot about us uh, during this last year. And we have only to thank him for that. I will tell you that on Wednesday nights, uh, we, at, for a long time, were just live streaming the Bible study. We now are open to people who want to come and join us here for Bible study in the sanctuary. We're still live streaming it on uh, Facebook. But the other part of that is, uh, since like February, the sanctuary choir is meeting again on Wednesday evenings. And our Bible study begins at 6.30 and the Sanctuary Choir begins uh, their preparation time at 7.15. And I do see that as we move forward that uh, the numbers in the Sanctuary Choir are increasing. But I will tell you that even when the number of worship leaders in the sanctuary choir 
was at the smallest number, it never ceases to amaze me that they took it to another level. And it again, it was as though God was working not because of them, but in spite of them. Well, obviously he was using them, but uh, I just felt like and have through this last year that the church shares my passion and my burden. I said to you this morning at the outset of the sermon that in the last year, especially in those early Sundays, I felt like I was trying as a pastor to save a sinking ship. And uh, maybe I was preaching out of desperation and uh, trying to give everybody a sense of hope when there didn't seem to be very much of it anywhere else. Certainly not at Walmart, I can tell you. And uh, I just realized that over a period of time that, and I think this was the Lord's way of telling me this, listen, calm down. Just su- calm down, just settle down. Preach what I give you to preach. And trust me to know what the people need and everything will be okay if you just let uh, the Lord take care of it. And so in that respect and maybe for other reasons, the last year uh, preaching for me has taken a whole new meaning. Uh, and I can't describe it to you. Uh, the, I think the urgency of it, realizing uh, how unprepared people are, how quickly people panic. We saw that in years past when the forecasters called for two inches of snow. We should have known what was going to happen, God forbid, uh, when they called for a pandemic to happen, to take place as it did. And so people are clearly not prepared. And my question right now as pastor is, what's going to happen? Uh, one day this is going to be open, over and done with. And it's going to be a moment of truth for people to uh, let the Lord know and the rest of the world, uh, what was it really that was keeping you out of church uh, for that year and beyond? Because there will come a day when this will be over. And uh, I'm thankful for the Internet and ministering to people who are limited and uh, just not uh, physically able to get out of their house and be in the Lord's house. And uh, what I do not want is for Facebook and YouTube to become an instrument for somebody who just does not want to be in the Lord's house. And I do not want to be guilty of giving you an excuse to stay home. And we have a privilege above all privileges. And we had it taken from us for a little bit. And now we've got it back. And I'm telling you, I thank God for it in a way that we never had. There's some ministries coming up that, well, I say they would have been coming up, except now we don't know. Uh, It's not very likely that the Easter musical is going to be presented as it was, not this past year, but years prior to that, when we could invite the community here to the sanctuary to share in the blessing of the Sanctuary Choir. I I believe that our best option at this point is to uh, present those songs on Sunday morning uh, in worship time. We're still going to hear the Easter musical. We're just not going to hear it all at one time and all at one place. Uh, It does not look like Vacation Bible School is going to be uh, possibility this year. I know things can change. And by the way, when I mentioned earlier about uh, Easter service, I'm curious to see if there are going to be any change in restrictions in the next month. Uh, obviously, it's not a month. It's only about two weeks. And Easter is the first Sunday in April. And uh, I kind of thought, well, maybe given last year that we weren't able to uh, have service and there was quite a stir about churches not being allowed to have people in the sanctuary on Easter Sunday. 
So I don't know if the powers that be are going to bow to the pressure and do something that will allow us churches to come together for Easter Sunday or not. But we'll just wait and see what happens. But we'll see what happens with Vacation Bible School. Uh, it does appear at this point that that's not going to happen for a second consecutive year. I don't know what will happen about homecoming. Obviously, that gets in the fall of the year, but uh, we're not there yet. So there are a lot of question marks, and it's all in the Lord's timing. And our eyes and our ears, uh, our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears are in tune to what the Lord wants us to do. And so we've gone through this last year, and boy, what a year it has been. Uh, and... It has taken the combined efforts of everyone. Now, I want to be very fair, very honest, and say to uh, everyone that many of those who have not been back to church have still been faithful to support the church and be faithful in stewardship. And so it has to be their time. And uh, there were some who said that they would be back when they get both shots, and on and on it goes. And so... Everybody has uh, their goal that has to be uh, accomplished before they get back. With that in mind, a couple of things I want to share with you personally. And in these last, uh, in the last year, uh, well, even prior to that, in fact, it will be three years since I had bypass surgery. Uh, before that, I was on medication for AFib, and uh, in fact, I'm still on it. And even though I don't have AFib, uh, whatever they did uh, during my bypass surgery uh, worked. It took care of the AFib, and I haven't had a problem with that for some time. I'm looking to get off the medicine, but I'm not there yet. And I have a, an appointment in a couple of weeks, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'm going to find out if that doctor can stand to see a grown man cry. And, but nonetheless, uh, something happens on Sunday morning, and it just happened here a minute ago. You will see me do this. And some of the medicine is always worse than what you're taking is worse than what you're taking it for. And practically every medicine has uh, side effects. And one of the side effects of that is nasal drip. The strange thing about it is, I never have that until Sunday morning. I don't have any problem during the week. Uh, boy, is this the devil's work or what? And the other part of it is sometimes it isn't nasal drip. It just feels like it. But I don't know that. And so I don't have any choice but to do this. This is embarrassing for me, but it would be more embarrassing if I didn't do it. And certain things would take place. And so I tell you that to say that uh, that's just one of the things that uh, happens. I can tell you that on Sunday morning, and maybe this is a part of the medication too, by the time I get through the service, my shirts are soaking wet. I don't go to the door. I change clothes when I get here on Sunday morning, and I change clothes before I leave here to go home. I bring a uh, change of clothes with me because I would not go outside in cold weather with a shirt that's soaking wet. It's just perspiration. Uh, there have been some Sundays when and I can tell the back of my hair. That never happens during the week. Uh, in fact, I never work up a sweat during the week. I'm not going to do anything at this point in my life uh, that's hard enough, but i got to work up a sweat. But I tell you that to make you aware of some things that are going on. And so that gives me something that I have to fight that it doesn't become a distraction because it could very easily do it. And so when I'm doing this, and even if it's one time, and sometimes it's not at all, I've changed things. The medicine I normally would take on Sunday morning, I wait until I get home. So I've tried different things to see what works and uh, whether it does or it doesn't. But interesting thing, it doesn't happen every Sunday. It doesn't happen every service. Uh, at least this part of it doesn't. But I let you know that 
uh, that's going on. The other thing, part of it is uh, to tell you, and I've said this before, so I just kind of a reminder, I'm not responsible for anything anybody tells me on Sunday morning. I am not. Uh, if I'm standing at the door and six people tell me something, then uh, by the time I get home, I'm trying to remember who said what. When I was in the pulpit this morning, I reached my hand in my pocket, and I have no idea how this gravel got in my pocket. I have no I thought, well, maybe that's one of my kidney stones. Did I lose that somewhere along the way? And But I just say, you tell me something on Sunday morning, by the time I get home, I don't know who's got the kidney stones, who's got the gallstones, and I'm trying to remember who has what. And so whatever you tell me on Sunday, I agree with you. I will tell you I am looking forward to this being over and done with, and for one reason, and one reason, a lot of reasons, but one reason mainly. I'll be glad when you all can take those masks off. I'll be glad when I can see you as you are. And now I feel like Paul, I'm looking through a glass darkly. Um, I don't see all things clearly. The other part of it is, I've said this before, I read lips. And so not only do I not see you like you are, I don't really hear what you're saying. Uh, I have to tell you, maybe you have said sometime, that's the worst sermon I've ever heard. And I say, yes, yeah, thank you. God bless you. God bless you. I love you too. But I just, I read lips, and that's what I do. And this has just been the worst year, uh, because obviously with face masks, you can't see me and I can't see you. I guess all things considered, it's worked out pretty well. But it has been a challenge. It really has been a challenge. But God has worked through it all. One other note before I close, uh, in the, giving you a, my update on my physical well-being, Sometime in the future, probably going to be now after the 1st of April, I'm scheduled for surgical procedure on my eye. Uh, I've had a number of people ask, and some of them didn't ask, look kind of peculiar at this, but uh, I have uh, seen a couple of doctors about it, and uh, the one that I saw this past week uh, says it will have to be removed, and uh, he did require that there are certain hoops that I have to jump through before they will do that. And so uh, one appointment will be tomorrow with the primary doctor, get the green light from him. I have uh, an appointment already the 1st of April with my cardiologist. Uh, that was already scheduled. So probably after that, uh, I will do this. Uh, I get this taken care of. But I just want to let you know that's something that doesn't hurt, uh, doesn't interfere with my vision, but it's something that they say will have to uh, be removed. Uh, enough about me. <laughs> let me talk about, let's talk about you. And I just want you to know that there's no words to thank you. And I'm not just talking about the ones who are here. I'm talking about the church family. Uh, the ones who are here on Sunday morning, the ones who are not here on Sunday morning. It's been a challenge. Uh, it has for all of us. And we've just tried to work our way through this. And we trust the Lord to lead us, and we believe he's done that. Uh, as I said, there's not been any blueprint from the past uh, to work by, to work from. And we've had to ask the Lord to lead us and to guide us. But the spirit of the people in this church has made it, uh, made it possible, has made a difference. And for those who are uh, wondering about if and when I should go back, I will leave it uh, at this. There is nobody in this church that obviously I'm here in the pulpit but there's nobody in this church that I would not be seated beside on Sunday morning with or without a mask. I pray from the start of our return to this church that God would put a shield around this church. And I do believe he's done that. We've had some people in the church who have had COVID. 
but they were not in the service here prior to them getting it. And so it never required us to quarantine anybody because they were outside of the church, even though they had been here uh, prior to it, but not in the last two weeks. And so my prayer has been for God to put a hedge about the church, put a shield about us. Uh, shields are big things now, you know, but none more important than the one the Lord puts around us. And so it would be hypocritical of me to say that I'm encouraging you to come to church when I've got fear in my heart about uh, sitting beside you or talking to you. I have no reservations about doing either one. And so the other thing is, you've got to know this, as your pastor, your spiritual and physical well-being is of utmost importance to me. And as much as I am concerned about your spiritual well-being, I am equally concerned about your physical well-being. And I would never, even ever, think about subjecting you to something that I think would put you at risk. And so I'm just simply telling you that I'm not here to talk you into doing something that I would not do myself. I'd go through this congregation on Sunday morning and I'd sit down and talk to anybody in here. But again, we're being safe and we're doing what we know to do. And we're just praying that in God's good time, more so than yours, uh, you'll be back and you'll worship with us. And at some point, uh, all of these precautions will be a distant memory. But for now, they're not. And the ministries of the church are going to continue to open just as the uh, just as the restrictions are uh, abandoned and just everybody can get back uh, to being what we were being and doing what we were doing before all of this started. So thank you and just God bless you and want you to know that I love you and God loves you and Jesus Christ is coming back. He's coming again and we're going home. And I tell you does. We're going to keep on keeping on. Father, thank you today for these moments together, for allowing me to share from my heart. And I pray that I'm just not telling what I feel, that I'm sharing the heart of the church and what I believe uh, the people in this church think what they believe and what they feel. We ask you, Father, to continue to do what you've already done. Open the door for people to come and worship and share together and just to be able to do it in a spirit and feeling of safety and really just a feeling of freedom, just to feel free to come and worship and not to be able to do it in fear because that's, uh, that's no way to worship and we would not ask anybody to do that. And so we're here and we feel good about it and we want others to join us as the Lord leads them. And it really has to be as the Lord leads. So thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.